Welcome to the series I'm going to tentatively call History Behind Warhammer, where I'm going to look at the atrociously huge amount of lore behind the various settings and see where they draw inspiration for real life history. Because goddammit, I'm going to get something out of my majors. Now as you probably know, the Imperium of Man is basically Rome in space. Yeah, there's some Crusader in there and other cultures depending on where you go, but one look at its main language, which is just Len with a fancy dumb name, and you can pretty clearly see which civilization inspired Games Workshop the most. I mean, sure, it's all incorrect Latin, but you can't copyright correctly. Latin, so even though it's wrong, don't expect Astra Militarum to be going anywhere anytime soon. And much like the Roman Empire, the quote-unquote modern-day Imperium is surrounded by enemies that it can't finish off despite being stronger than most of them due to it overextending itself tremendously. Early on, however, this wasn't the case. Much like the Roman Republic, the Imperium during the Great Crusade encountered plenty of enemies, but few that gave it a true fight where victory wasn't just assumed from the get-go. Battle after battle just led to the growth of the Empire, and yet much like their counterparts in the 30th millennium, the Roman Republic faced one enemy that gave them a run for their money, an enemy that continued to influence them even after they were long gone themselves. For the Romans, this enemy was Carthage. For the Imperium, it was the Rangdon. Now, on the surface of this comparison, you might look and go, what the hell are you on about, you diabetic fool? Because unless I missed the most interesting ancient history class of my life, Carthage never had mind-controlled slave armies or other horrific technology. And yet, look a bit deeper, and sure enough, you'll find where Games Workshop copy and pasted Carthage into the grim darkness of the far future before they changed the names around a bit. First and most obvious, the Rangdon were taken out in three separate wars, and the third one was largely a formality just to fully finish them off. This was much the same as the Romans. First two Punic Wars were devastating stating in their scale and had some of the finest tactical geniuses, from Hannibal and the Alps beating the ever-living shit out of Rome to Scipio and Zama finally putting him down. These wars dwarfed the third one in comparison, which was mostly just Rome obliterating Carthage from existence. Now let's look at the ranged and xenocides. Let's see. The first to involve a massive threat to the Imperium during a time where expansion had otherwise been going fairly smoothly. Check one. While there's little on the ranged side, the Imperium had some amazing commanders in the form of their Primarchs double check. And the third Xenocide was just the Imperium wiping them off the face of the galaxy. Triple check. Not only that, but the technology of the Rangdon mirrored that of Carthage's during their battles with Rome. Sure, Carthage couldn't turn moons into spaceships, which on a side note would have made Rome Total War way more interesting, but Carthage possessed a navy that was far far superior to Rome's at the time. It took a lot of time and reverse engineering on Rome's part to actually be able to effectively battle the Carthaginians at sea. Meanwhile, the Rangdon had technology that far outstripped the Imperium in many respects, with their warriors being able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with space marines, their forward outposts were so incredibly advanced and powerful the Imperium actually thought they were the homeworlds at first, and moons they turned into weapons. Because fuck you and fuck your crusade. Of course, the Imperium didn't pull any awesome reverse engineering to win and set the stage for a twist that all Imperial vessels are secretly influenced by or even worse, replicas of vile Xenotech. Nah, they just threw soldiers at the problem until it went away. Hey, it worked for the Russians, didn't it? And on the last similarity, much like Rome didn't face an opponent on that scale until after their civil wars, the Imperium didn't fight any outside foes on the scale of the Rangdon until after the Horus Heresy. There were plenty of orcs kicking around, but they swiftly learned that a war boss is not greater or equal to Primarch. Not until the Beast, at least. The Necrons were still almost universally asleep, the Tyranids hadn't even noticed the galaxy by that time. The Eldar sure were there, that's you know, about the most you can say for them. The Tau were clearly tricking the galaxy into thinking they didn't exist until the time was right to drown it in a tide of blue for the greater good. Meanwhile, back in ancient Rome, they were just shit-stomping their way across the Mediterranean Sea with no one to stop them. You can argue about just how difficult the conquest of Gaul was, or campaigns such as Parthians keeping Romans from graduating from continental to world power, but only Carthage in the early days was really able to pose a meaningful barrier to the Republic's domination. When they were gone, Rome was in the clear to go ballistic on the Mediterranean. The biggest enemy Rome faced after Carthage was itself during the civil wars after Caesar's death. The Imperium faced its biggest enemy after the Rangdon in the form of Horus. So while they aren't exact parallels, I hope you can see how the ancient Carthaginians inspired one of the earliest foes mankind faced under the banner of the Imperium. And I do hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry if it was a bit lighter on jokes, but I was just so happy to talk about actual real history that I mostly just wrote down the parallels. I'll do better next time. Or at least add the bruh sound effect at some point or something. Either way, thanks for watching. I sincerely hope you learned something today. Take care out there. The Imperium faced this enemy in the form of the Rangdon. The Romans went head to toe with Carth. Head to toe? What the fuck?